apparently I'm a really big feminist. <laughs> Girl power, yes, you know? exactly. Cheers! Cheers! We're sitting in this gorgeous space at Hank's, which you help bring to life. How does it feel when you're actually in a spot and it's open? It feels, it's probably the best part of it, is mm -hmm. just to like see, because you design the space for everyone else, so to see your clients love it and to see the people love it yeah. is just the reason I do any of this. How do you approach a space and a project like this? It's kind of a beast, but it was more, you know, division of the space and then kind of like, sitting down with the clients and talking about how they wanted each space to feel. Because mm -hmm. every one of them, the cafe, the restaurant, and the bar are different, but they all have to go together because visually they're all connected. Yeah. You know, the cafe, we wanted to be a little more whimsical. The restaurant, it was a little bit more upscale, but also had to sort of feel daytime. Yeah. And then the, the bar kind of transitions into that more formal feel, but still keeping the kind of natural materials, the comfortable element. We really wanted families to feel welcome here. When did you start to develop your own preferences and aesthetic and love for style and design? According to my aunt, when I spoke with her recently, she said even when I was like five, she had to come upstairs because I would have rearranged my closet so that every <laughs> single one of my stuffed animals could see out. I love that. And so I guess I've been thinking about it for a long time. Yeah. How did you get comfortable with things like assembling and power tools and making. I grew up where my dad treated myself and my brother very equally. Anything he did, I could do. And so he bought us each our own set of tools. When I wanted doll furniture that was expensive and it was name brand, he would say like, no, let's try making it. Did you have power tools at the age of five? I did. So you've been doing this type of creation a long time. What's one of your favorite activities to do in the design process? Almost in every single space, whether it's residential or commercial, I'll design something custom. Because yeah. it's so fun to be able to not only design the actual space, but make sure that the pieces in it fit. Like mm -hmm. all of these boots and you know the tables. Just like how I had a dollhouse and no doll toys were good enough, so I would like make my own mini Christmas present boxes and then make teeny tiny baby baby like beanie babies out of Sculpey and like wrap them. Like nothing is ever good enough unless you like make it your own. Yes, that is so darling. And darling and also a little psychotic. <laughs> However you want to look at it. <laughs> right now is a really exciting time for you. You have had a show that is doing tremendously well. What has that experience been like? It's kind of a, been a whirlwind. I'm usually a little more behind the scenes in life and uh, so kind of learning how to do the, the skill that you have so naturally and being able to like talk in front of a camera and not be my normal awkward self. It's called Get Out of My Room. The story is that siblings share a room, they're sick of sharing a room, and there's another room for them to go into. It's kind of like that show Trading Spaces, but for kids, right? Wow. So like I go with one sibling and design the other sibling's room, and then I go with that sibling and design that room. We learn about what their sibling wants. They get to make projects, pick the colors, and so it's kind of this sibling separation, but also such a sibling bonding experience. Mm -hmm, I'm sure. You become their family, like you are in their house. Like we had one family with seven kids, like. They invite you over to dinner even after you're done filming. Yeah. We've done treehouse rooms, we've done spaceship rooms, we've done princess rooms, um, water themed rooms. I mean, it's been really fun to see all the different reactions. It's actually funny because they're all so excited because they really don't see the room. Then they get in the room and you think they're gonna say all this stuff and they're just like totally speechless. They're speechless, that's yeah. so sweet. The show, Get Out of My Room, what drew you to that? I've been presented show ideas before, and for me, the big selling point with this one was it's important for me to make sure that children, especially young girls, learn this creative part of them that I feel like oftentimes is lost. It instills this confidence in them that I think is really needed as you go through life. Whether they think they're artistic or not, you know, they can all learn how to do these things. To see a girl at the beginning of a scene be scared of like a brad nailer and then you start doing it and she's like, I'll try it. And then she's like whizzing. It's so fun to, to see that. And so for me to be able to like 
make an impact on these girls' and boys' lives, and hopefully for the better, was kind of the, the whole reason I did the show. Yeah, that's really special, yeah. and I'm certain you did. Yeah. I'm sure those kids are gonna remember you for the longest time. You brought their dreams to life in I their know. room. When you wake up in the morning and that you know you get to pursue this life, how do you feel? What's the first thing you think about? I'm just pretty grateful, you know, despite like any kind of bumps in the road. The fact that I get to kind of make my own schedule, travel to Marfa if I want to, yeah. go for a walk in the middle of the day, go see my parents, and then still get to meet all of these amazing people and help them create special spaces, whether it be a home or a commercial space. Yeah. Like, how lucky am I, you know? Yeah, it's a really good life. So when you decided to make a big change in your life and start your own business, how did you work up the courage to do that? Well, it is a terrifying thing. If you don't know where your next mortgage payment is coming from, uh, rent or whatever you have, I managed to keep a part-time job mm -hmm. while I started up my business. And then eventually I got a job that was big enough that I could leave my part-time job, take the leap, you can always go back. When you're scared, you can always go back yeah. to a nine to five, but you're never gonna be able to go forward unless you take that leap, right? Yes. And that's such fantastic advice. How do you describe your style if you had to put it in a few words? Basically, I wear the same thing every day. You're like Doug Funny. You just go to your closet and grab it. I, I love that life. I mean, I grew up wearing a uniform, so for me, it's all about just buying pieces that all work together. Same with jewelry, and then you can mix and match depending on your mood. I like to tell people I'm a minimalist maximalist. Yes. It's, you know, it's this new term that I am. Uh, but don't ask me what it means. <laughs> no, but that's what I am. But that's what I am. <laughs> On that note, cheers to that and all that you are and all that's ahead. Yay! We really appreciate it. Thank you.